Welcome to another SalesInc.com rules discussion. In this series, we're breaking down the 2021 to 2024 racing rules of sailing into manageable chunks to make them easier to digest. We'll use a topical approach rather than, rather than slog through the rule book page by page. We'll also use lots of examples and ask questions to keep you engaged. Today's topic is Rule 10 on opposite tax. This series is an update to the Fair Sailing Initiative, originally sponsored in 2018 by the Inland Lake Yachting Association. Also, thanks to UK sailmakers for generating the animated scenarios. Part two of the rules covers situations when boats meet or are about to meet. The rules in this part are designed to prevent contact between boats. The preamble to part two says that these rules apply between boats that are intend to race, are racing, or have been racing. Section A of part two describes which boat has the right of way. If you have right of way, other boats are required to keep clear of you. This doesn't mean you can do anything you want. Sections B, C, and D of part two give limitations on what you can do as the right of way boat. In this video, we'll cover the first rule in Section A, Rule 10 on opposite tax. Take a moment to read the rule. The rule says that when boats are, are on opposite tax, the port tack boat shall keep clear of the starboard tack boat. This seems pretty simple, but there are a few nuances that may trip you up. First, note the words in italics. These words have specific definitions in the racing rules. Let's look at the definitions for the terms in Rule 10. Pay attention here because these affect the answers to the scenarios we'll discuss in the next slides. First, the definition of starboard tack and port tack. How would you define starboard and port tacks? Here's how the rule book defines them. The tack you're on is based on your windward side. Note also that windward is in italics and has a definition. We'll get to that definition shortly. Next, the definition of keep clear. Take a moment to read the definition. This is a very important definition in the rules. Two key points. First, the right-of-way boat gets to sail her course with no avoiding action. And second, if the boats are overlapped, the right-of-way boat, right boat must be able to change course in either direction without immediately making contact. We'll cover the definition of overlapped in the presentation on Rule 11. Let's apply these rules and definitions to five scenarios. Here's the first scenario. Watch what happens. At one boat length apart, green heads up to avoid a collision and blue bears off to duck green. Blue protests green, claiming green changed course. Green protests blue, claiming that blue failed to keep clear. Which boat should promptly take penalty turns? The answer is that blue should take a penalty. Blue was on port and was required to keep clear so that green could sail her course with no need to take avoiding action. Green only headed up to avoid a collision. Let's watch the next scenario. Red asks permission to cross and green replies, hailing cross, green ducks red. Another boat not involved in the situation sees green duck and protests red for not keeping clear. Which boat should promptly take penalty turns? The answer is neither. This seems fairly obvious, but let's discuss why this is okay according to the rules and definitions. Remember the definition of keep clear. A boat is keeping clear if the right-of-way boat, in this case green, can sail her course. The words her course imply the course of her choosing. So in this case, red did keep clear of green by allowing green to sail the course of her choosing. There are many times when a starboard boat may want to allow a port boat to cross. Here's the next scenario with two boats sailing downwind by the lee. 
Sailing by the lee means that the wind is coming over the same side of the boat that the sail is on. The boats collide with no damage. Both boats protest each other, each boat claiming that the other boat was on port tack and was required, and was required to keep clear. Which boat should promptly take a penalty? The answer is that yellow should take a penalty. Blue is on starboard and yellow is on port. This was probably easy for most or all of you. The rule, bi the rule book makes it more complicated than it actually is. In the next slide, we'll show this using the definitions of tack and leeward and windward. This scenario illustrates why the definitions and the rules are so important. Remember from the def definition of starboard and port tack that the tack is defined by the windward side. The definition section of the rules tells us the meaning of windward side. The definition starts by saying that a boat's leeward side is the side that is away from the wind. This part of the definition applies when you're sailing upwind or on a reach. What about when you're sailing downwind? The definition says that when sailing by the lee or directly downwind, a boat's leeward side is the side on which her mainsail lies. The other side is her windward side. So which boat is on starboard? The answer is blue. You've probably figured out the easy way to remember for both upwind and downwind. Just look at which side of the boat is on the opposite side of where your mainsail lies. This works for all situations except when you're head to wind or in the middle of attack or jibe. Here's another downwind scenario. Green is overtaking red. Red hails to green saying, overtaking boat, keep clear. Green continues and contacts red. There is no damage. Green protests red for not keeping clear. Which boat or boats should promptly take a penalty? Red should take a penalty. Red and green are on opposite tacks, so rule 10 applies. Red is on port and must keep clear of green. Red mistakenly assumed that rule 12 applies. Rule 12's title is on the same tack, not overlapped. This rule does not apply to boats on opposite tacks. We'll cover rule 12 in a separate presentation. Note that green broke rule 14, avoiding contact. We'll discuss this type of situation involving rules 14 and 43 in another presentation. We'll see that, since there is no damage, green is exonerated and not required to take a penalty. However, in this case, green should have prudently avoided contact. Green could then protest red for not keeping clear and still have avoided the contact. Here's a scenario with a boat sailing upwind meeting a boat sailing downwind. Note that green jibes and completes her jibe before meeting red. Green bears off to avoid a collision. Both red and green allege that the other boat failed to keep clear. Which boat or boats should promptly take a penalty? The answer is that red should take a penalty. After green jibes, red and green are on opposite tacks, so rule 10 again applies. Red is on port and must keep clear of green. Red mistakenly thought that rule 11, which we'll call for now the windward leeward rule, applied. Again, the lesson here is that if boats are on opposite tacks, rule 10 applies regardless of what direction they're sailing or whether or not they are overlapped. In summary, as we'll see in the upcoming presentations, there are only four right-of-way rules. Rule 10 on opposite tacks, Rule 11 on the same tack and overlapped, Rule 12 on the same tack and not overlapped, and then Rule 13 while tacking. When you meet another boat, only one of these right-of-way rules will apply. If you're the right-of-way boat, you are entitled to sail your course and the other boat must keep clear, unless any of the rules of Part 2, Sections B, C, or D limit the right-of-way boat's actions. Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a comment. If you like our content, please subscribe. Also, visit our website at salesing.com for much more.